Good morning. It's great to be back today, and I just want to say welcome to everybody. There are a lot of people to introduce uh, and congratulate today, so I'm going to get right to it. I know that we have an exciting day planned of professional development for a lot of you. Um, as the slide says, our theme this year is engaging every learner every day, and we hope that you can keep engaged for the next 45 minutes. Um, our sponsors today are the school affiliated organizations and their sponsors, our sponsors actually covered the breakfast which was provided by our food service. Wasn't it a great breakfast? We also want to thank uh, Falls Church Education Foundation, our elementary PTA, our high school PTA, our athletic boosters, our middle school PTA, and also our band boosters. And these groups are made up of members of our community who are incredibly important to us as partners with our school. They provide support in so many ways, uh, more than I can enumerate. And this year they are joining together to celebrate 180 days of gratitude to let you know how much your work is appreciated in this community. And here's a short video that they put together for you um, that shows the vision of gratitude from many of our community members. Arigato. Gammon. Danke. Grazie. Muchas gracias. Thank you for all your hard work. Showing gratitude is one of the simplest and most powerful things humans can do for one another. I'm Debbie Hiscott, Executive Director of the Falls Church Education Foundation. And on behalf of the school affiliated organizations, I'd like to wish you a 180 days filled with gratitude from all of us. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Nicolias. Thank you, Miss Smith. Thank you from the class of 2017. Thank you for my education. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To all the TJ teachers and the Mount Daniel teachers. Thank you for teaching us, teachers. We have great students and it's because of you and what you do every day that makes our students even greater. From city staff, thank you Falls Church teachers. We are launching this year with gratitude in our hearts. We are grateful for our bus drivers and aides, daycare team, custodial, technology, food service, paraprofessionals, finance, and administrative teams. And of course, our teachers. Please accept our thanks for each and every day you work to support our schools, our students, and our staff. Thank you for all that you do, for your hard work and professionalism. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Nicolais, for teaching me third grade this year. Thank you, Ms. Marple, for teaching me reading this year. Thank you, Mr. Sam and Mr. Steven. Thank you, teachers. You're the best. Thank you, Ms. Mountain, for all your hard work. Thank you, all teachers at TJ Elementary School. Thank you, Matt Daniel teachers. Thanks from the class of 2015. Thank, Thank you. We're looking forward to a great school year. Thank you for the great work you do day in and day out for our kids and our community. It is much appreciated. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we want to quickly introduce the leaders of those organizations. With the Falls Church Education Foundation, our Executive Director, Debbie Hiscott, and President Cecily Shea, who are over here. Our Elementary PTA President, Elizabeth Mead. Mary Ellen Henderson, PTA, President Adina Williams. George Mason Athletic Boosters, President Tom Johnson. Our FCCPS Band Boosters, Maria Marcus. And our high school PTA couldn't be here today, but let's give them a round of applause as well. We're gonna start off this morning with 180 Days of Gratitude, and we want to extend it forward to a very special group of people who make um, an incredible difference for us every single year, not only in our school system, but also in our community. And we couldn't do it without our partnership that we have with our Falls Church City Police Department. And I think that you know when we talk about 180 Days of Gratitude, we could thank them every 
single day, not just today. And I think that we are really dedicating this morning to them um, and just want you to know how honored we are that so many of you are here with us um, this morning. And before I actually have them join me on the stage so that we can say thank you, I'm just curious for us, um, because I know we live in a day and time where being a police officer um, it is tough in, in, in across the country. How many of you have a mother or a father who were an officer or are an officer, if you'd stand up? A mom or a dad? Anybody? Okay, so you'll stay standing. Let's just see about some of the people that are family members. What about a son or a daughter? If you are the son or a daughter, a sister or brother, do you have a son or a daughter? Okay, these, these are family members. Anybody else that has an immediate family member um, that serves in the police force anywhere across the country, across the world? And what about the armed services? How many of you have served in the armed services of some, some type? And how many of you have parents or brothers or sisters that have served on our behalf? Wow. On behalf of FCCPS, we thank your families. Um, we're a community where we know that um, it does take the entire, we're going to say the village, that's an old saying, um, but those of you who also support police officers as their families and, and for what you do, we want to say thank you. And at this time, I'm going to have uh, Chief Gavin, I'm going to introduce uh, some of your members. So Mary Gavin, if you would come and join uh, on stage. We have our community service officer, James Brooks. And they may not be exactly in order, but come on up. We want to recognize you. And if I miss somebody, you're going to have to tell me. We, Mary and I tried to take care of this. Uh, Clark Gagnon, who is our resource officer for George Mason. We also have uh, uh, Lieutenant Pilar uh, Yuleman. <laughs> Captain Tom Pilera, who is also our fire marshal. We all know the fire marshal. And I might say he's a great fire marshal. He keeps us safe, tells us what to do, and when he says get that stuff off the walls, we do it. Um, <laughs> Lieutenant Dan Zakula. <laughs> Sergeant Steve Rao, who was a resource officer here for many years. <laughs> Sergeant Juan Shateri. And an extension of our police department are also our crossing guards. And Bill Abel, Audrey Leftman, and Sarah Hassan uh, could not be here today, and they are represented by Janet Haynes. And I just want to say, I think she's going to join us on the stage as well. She is starting, listen to this, her 50th year as a crossing guard. And I just have to say the year, 1967. <laughs> Amazing. Again, we cannot, I cannot express how honored I am that you've taken time away from the work that you do uh, to be with us today. And I honestly feel like as a school superintendent, and I say it all the time, there's only one thing that really trumps student achievement and as student safety. And I could not be um, more blessed to have the team that I do because if I have a concern and I pick up the phone, I know someone's gonna answer right away. Um, and I can't tell you how much that means to all of us. And we feel safe uh, and safer in our community because of you. And we do wanna recognize, Mary, if you'll come forward, we have a, just a little plaque for you. Um, presented to the Falls Church Police Department in appreciation of the partnership between the Falls Church City Public Schools and the Police Department of Falls Church City. We also want to provide one of our annual awesome t-shirts to each one of you. On your way out, we just picked a size so you can trade for whatever size you would like at, at the table outside.
So it does take a community of uh, people to to uh, make things work, and uh, I am most appreciative to all of you, to the Mustangs, to the Tigers, to the Hippos, to the Husties, um, a lot of heroes of mine on this stage, uh, particularly Janet Haynes. Um, but we uh, look forward to working with you together this year for a happy, healthy, safe um, school year. And uh, we know we can't do it without you because in all honesty, and I keep telling everybody this, you all are the first responders. And um, we think of your school communities as sacred ground. And we know that you have a great influence on some of the most precious um, everything in this community, and that's our children. So uh, thank you. We look forward to working with you in the year, and have a great day. Thank you. And I'm going to ask us to do one more big round of applause because we're going to let them sneak out because they have real work to do. Uh, they don't want to spend, I don't think, the next 30 minutes with us. So thank you on behalf of FCCPS. Thank you. Last week, we welcomed a fabulous group of brand new teachers. If you're new to FCCPS, would you please stand up just so we can give you a welcome and their names are in the program. Thank you. We are thrilled to have you. If you keep an eye on the Twitter feed, please join in um, and use hashtag FCCPS or ha hashtag 180 gratitude if you think of something that you're thankful for or a mentor even that you want to mention. We have a fantastic group of administrators this year at Mount Daniel. We have a new but not brand new principal, Aaron Kelly, who is uh, planning an amazing year at Mount Daniel. <laughs> Assistant Principal Jeremy Ferrara is joining Falls Church this year. Mount Daniel. TJ, we have a new principal, Mr. Paul Swanson, coming to us from Indiana. We have former teacher Rob Carey, who's joining us as an administrative intern at TJ. And Michelle Hikarik is also here, uh, assistant principal, still with us. <laughs> At George Mason High School, a new but not new, Mr. Matt Hills is our new principal. <laughs> David Serensis is joining us from another school division as assistant principal. And Kevin Clark is returning assistant principal at George Mason. At Jesse Thackeray, we have our director, Liz Germer, and also Rachel Hamburger. Way back in the back. And at MEH, we have the superstar team of Principal Ty Harris and Assistant Principal John Pepper. And next, we have quite a dual role. We'll have to get her away from the computer and switch her hat here. Our Vice Mayor of Falls Church, Mary Beth Conley, is going to give us a quick welcome back. Hello friends, it's so nice to see so many of you today. Um, in the daytime, I'm the Community Outreach Director for Falls Church City Public Schools. In that role, I work with businesses and nonprofits to bring partners into classrooms and build support for schools. Every August, I distribute this new teacher welcome bag. Does everybody remember the bag they got when they started here? If you're a new teacher or a new staff member, I'll be visiting you this week to bring you one. Um, this is a concrete representation of the high regard this community has for each one of you. So every summer, I also invite the mayor to speak at convocation. And when the mayor isn't available, I ask the vice mayor to stand in. So when Dave Tarter told me last week that he couldn't attend, I had a quick conversation with myself, and here I am. <laughs> uh, the vice mayor bringing you greetings from the city of Falls Church. Mayor Tarter and all the council members send their regards and wish you all a wonderful year. 
Over the years, I've been lucky to be a guest in many of your classrooms. On those visits, I often feel like I'm in the midst of a best practices tutorial. I come away energized by the high level of teaching and learning that's happening every day right here in Falls Church. That inspiration carries over to my new role as vice mayor. In fact, it inspired me to run for council in the first place. And you, my colleagues and friends, have been the best teachers. You model cooperation and patience in teaching a class of little ones to walk in line. You encourage teamwork in classrooms, on playgrounds, on stage, riding the bus, and on athletic teams. You teach all the skills necessary to succeed, academic, social, and life skills. Students learn from every person in the building. You show students the value of hard work. While visiting a Mason math class, I discovered that all the calculus I knew in college is long gone. But those teenagers were working so hard to understand difficult concepts because they have a teacher who loves to teach. There are other excellent schools nearby and around the country, but I'm confident that no other school division is as thoroughly excellent as FCCPS because of each of you. From preschool through high school, you shine. Teachers, bus drivers, maintenance, technology, paraprofessionals, finance, food services, office staff, custodians, administrators, daycare. You're the heart of Falls Church City Public Schools and the soul of the city. When Mayor Charter goes out and promotes Falls Church as a great place to move and do business, our excellent schools are always at the top of the list of reasons to come here. When families move here for the schools, they aren't moving here for the buildings or the textbooks or even the technology. They're moving here for the people. They're moving here because of you. You are all stars in the world of public education. Because people in Falls Church care so much about their schools, sometimes you're under a microscope and that makes life more challenging. And that's when dedicated administrators and sympathetic elected officials need to work together to support you and one another. That's an opportunity to put even greater depth in the story of the inspirational education that's happening right here in Falls Church. So when the short but very long month of February comes around, and the excitement of the first day is long past, I hope you remember two things from today. You are the heart and soul of Falls Church, and you have a friend on City Council. Thank you for your dedication and your hard work. I'm looking forward to sharing a great year with all of you. And now I'm gonna introduce Justin Castillo, the chair of the school board. Thank you, Mary Beth. That was a, I, I agree with everything she said. Um, I, I had a failed career as a teacher for three years at law school. Um, and I taught uh, professionalism to law students. I dealt with computers that, uh, I, I think while they were open and I was lecturing, they were not always on message, so I'm, I'm familiar with some of the challenges of technology, but one of the things I did learn from my professionalism teaching career of three years was the, the unique nature of being a professional. It requires training. It requires a license and a minimum level of skill so that no teacher is below average. You've got a certain standard as a professional, um, as an airline pilot. Um, there's a, an aspect of selflessness to it. You're serving others. And ultimately, and I think this is especially the case with teachers, it's not a job, it's a calling. And I think I, I sort of heard a call, but my, my ear was a little off. So that's why I am not a full-time teacher. Um, and, and I think as, as lawyers, I'm a lawyer, um, we like to think of ourselves as the sort of consummate professionals. We're guarding the rule of law. But uh, I had an interesting experience. Uh, my son George, you may be familiar with George, just graduated and was dropping me off at the airport one night at Dulles and got a speeding ticket <laughs> right after he dropped me off. I didn't think it was fair, so I said, George, you're going to court. <laughs> so 
he did by himself. And it was, it was interesting to be at the courthouse because it, it exposed to me a big gap between the rhetoric that lawyers have about the law and the reality. Uh, there were a lot of people, we were in Loudoun County Courthouse up in Fredericksburg, I mean up in um, Leesburg, and the, the system there uh, you know, ground away at people in traffic court who didn't really know their rights. Um, if you had a lawyer, if you paid for one, you got a, a, a different set of justice because you, know, you could meet with the Commonwealth attorney. Uh, if you were by yourself, you had to go in front of the judge. And I think if you contrast that with the work that you do for all students, we take all comers. Uh, I, as a lawyer, feel a bit ashamed. So, thanks for your hard work, and um, I appreciate it. So, and George did win his case, so. <laughs> so anyway, thank you. Now, Amanda Blanchard, uh, president of the Falls Church City Education. Good morning, everyone. Uh, in case you don't know my face, you will know it well. I am Amanda Blanchard. I am the president of your Falls Church City Education Association, and I'm just here to say welcome today. Um, I hope that folks who are new feel incredibly welcomed by both their staff, their schools, their district, their community. You are joining a very unique and special and supportive system. If you haven't felt it yet, raise your hand, maybe not now, um, and let us know because we need to be that that rock for you. Uh, the Virginia Education Association and Falls Church City Education Association want to be that touchstone with you and for you. So if you haven't joined our unique group, that would be something to come see me or your building reps about. But we are a wonderful part of this amazing school system and hope that you see that every single day for maybe a more than 180 days, but <laughs> for at least 180 days. So thank you so much for your time. I'm so excited that you're here um, and look forward to learning and growing with you this year. Thank you so much. Now at this time, if we could ask um, those who will be receiving 15, 20, 25, 30, and 35 year awards to come over to the side, just so that it's, everybody is out of their seat and is ready. And then when we call your name, you'll come up on the stage. And again, that is 15, 20, 25, 30, and 35, and those are in the program if you're wondering if that's you. In your program, you will see who served for five and ten years. And they will be recognized at their individual staff meetings. And when you come on stage, Lisa, uh, hi, we'll give you actually your award and we'll have people line up and the principals will say congratulations. We're starting out with two of our 20-year employees from Central Office this morning. Mr. Tom Horn, who is our Chief Legal uh, Services, also governs student activities, all of our athletics.
And I can honestly say he is the only person that I know in the education field that could do his job, that does the legal side and also everything that he does, and has built one of, I think, the finest uh, athletic programs in the state of Virginia, if not in the country. So congratulations, Mr. Horn, for 20 years. And next, we're recognizing Mr. Rick Jowers for 20 years. And I think Mr. Jowers has one of the hardest jobs on the planet in this school district to keep technology running 100% of the time, virtually no downtime unless it's planned. That's the expectation we all have. Um, and somehow he manages to do that and has done it for 20 years. So congratulations, Mr. Jowers. Now I'll invite Mr. Padilla. Hello, um, I'm Sevi Padilla. I'm the Director of Facilities and Security for the School District. Um, I'm here to celebrate 25 years for our custodial supervisor, Eduardo Molina. We've also got two maintenance employees that are celebrating 20 years, uh, Jose Fuentes Ortiz. At 15 years, we have LeBrian Thomas. And I'm gonna turn it over to Eduardo. Um, first of all, good morning and welcome back. Um, I want to take the opportunity to take, take my crew, the custodial staff for the whole system of our church. Thank them when you see them because they did an amazing job this summer. Thank you. Um, I'm going to take this time to um, um, talk to you about Sita Chansombat. Um, she started the same year I did. Um, she's celebrating 25 years. She's a custodian at MEH um, during the morning shift. Um, well, um, I want to welcome her and thank her for all the years of service she's done with us. Um, another co-worker of mine, um, Alice Tam, she works over in Mount Daniel in the evening shift. She couldn't be with us today, but she, is, um, she has been working with us for 20, 20 years. So whenever you see her, give her a hug and, and say thank you to her. Thank you. Good morning. I would like to recognize two outstanding faculty members from Mary Ellen Henderson. Mim McFarlane. Who is our library assistant. Um, Mim's job is quite unique because as you can imagine in a middle school, um, the library is the place to be. And so uh, in addition um, to her teammate Lori Fogel, uh, the two of them do an amazing job of handling the masses, especially during lunch, um, and making sure that every single student um, gets the attention that they deserve. So thank you, Mim. Also, with 15 years of service, is our counselor, Matt Sowers.
Matt uh, is a former tennis coach. He's kind of retired from that role, um, but he still does uh, a lot of things with the school, with the extracurricular activities, and as counselor this year with our rising sixth graders, um, he has an interesting task. Um, he's taken over the career fair uh, at our school, and then for those of you that aren't familiar with, with some of the things that we do at MEH, the career fair is something that he has taken and um, kind of built it himself. Um, and it's, it's amazing. If, if you get a chance to see that in the spring, um, you know, please come out to our school and, and Matt will, will greet you and find something for you to do, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Good morning. I'm the Director of Transportation. And I'm the Director of Food Service. I'm Richard Kane. Oh, I'm Nancy Hendrickson. Did I forget that? <laughs> We're doing a dual role here. It's not a comedy hour or anything. <laughs> but um, what many of you don't know is Nancy and I share a lot of our employees together. So we have a very special employee um, um, that we share together, and she has been here for 20 years. And the envelope says, go ahead. And the winner oh. is? She wins, because I can't. Helen Tam. Oh, Helen, come on up. <laughs> now, Helen works as a bus aide, but she also works in the food service department for us, and she also helps us set up that wonderful meal that we had out there this morning. Do you have any bells? No. No. Well, I have, I have three other employees that need to be recognized. Um, Suni, Soon Chung, and Jennifer Lee. They couldn't be here um, this morning because they had to fly back to their country um, to take care of their mom. And the, Third they're also shared employees. They're shared employees. And sometimes I don't like to share, to tell you the truth. <laughs> so the third employee um, is someone who cooks a lot. And if you ever taste out food, he's responsible for most of it in the functions during the day. His name is Julio Avila. You come up. He's been here for 15 years. So if you like that food this morning, show your appreciation with your applause. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Liz Germer. I'm the Director of Special Education, Student Services, and Early Learning. And we are lucky to celebrate Cecilia Guerra, who many of you in the special education department know kind of keeps things running smoothly. She's been with us for 15 years. She, <laughs> Cecilia always goes that extra mile to meet the needs of families and all of, your, all of you, the staff members, and I'm incredibly thankful for her support over the years. She really is my right hand and keeps the ship running smoothly. So welcome and thank you. All right, I'm Matt Hills, principal of George Mason High School. Uh, George Mason, we have actually the most honorees this morning. Uh, in the 15-year category, we have Mr. Will Snyder. <laughs> Miss Sally Larish. <laughs> Mr. Adam Amarin. <laughs> and Mr. Luis Sorto Fuentes. For 20 years, we are actually honoring two of our teachers. Uh, one very special, Mr. Chris Bacraldis. <laughs> uh, 
and Mrs. Tammy Chimchak. For 25 years, we have Miss Bridget Dean Pratt. I'm not sure the last gentleman needs an introduction. Many of you uh, see him around our building nights, weekends. I'm convinced he has a cot in his office. Uh, he's the reason why this production uh, was made possible today. Uh, and it's not just impressive that he's been working here longer than I've been alive. <laughs> it goes beyond the longevity. Uh, when you go to this particular gentleman and you ask him something, if he doesn't know the answer, he's going to find it. He's uh, special in the fact that he's willing to do whatever it takes for the students, for the teachers. We are so lucky to have him. Uh, please help me in celebrating the 35 years of Mr. John Ballou. Well, good morning. I'm Paul Swanson. I am the principal of Thomas Jefferson Elementary. <laughs> 20 bucks goes a long way. <laughs> we have three staff members to recognize this morning. I'd like to start out with a 15-year veteran, Mr. Nathan Griner. In addition to teaching all 800 plus kids at TJ, Nathan has been known in his spare time to win a handful of state championships in soccer. So congratulations, guy. And then we also wish to recognize Deborah Newman, 15 years here in TJ. Deborah could not be here this morning as our school secretary. She is fighting off five kinds of neck deep water registering kids and probably drinking heavily this weekend. <laughs> and then we also have the unique honor and pleasure to introduce somebody that's very special in our school. Um, and I'm personally honored to talk about this teacher. We all know that everybody, as has been remarked this morning, everybody plays a vital role. But there are some staff members in our buildings that are the icon of our school. They represent our school. And for 30 years, Mary Kelly has been that icon. Mary <laughs> Kelly. So without further ado, a genuine honor to introduce to you Mrs. Mary Kelly to share a few words. Good morning, Dr. Jones, Ms. High, school board members, administrators, teachers, support staff and all of those in the Falls Church City Public Schools community. It's an honor to be here for my 30th convocation in Falls Church City Public Schools. There's a quote by psychologist Carl Jung who said, one looks back with appreciation to the brilliant teachers, but with gratitude to those who touched our human feelings. The curriculum is so much necessary raw material, but warmth is the vital element for the growing plant and for the soul of the child. 
I find that quote very inspirational. I was fortunate to have many outstanding teachers in my life, but I realized that the ones that are most prominent in my mind were those that made sure they touched the heart of every child. It is these teachers that inspired me, and I'm sure many of you, to become part of the most rewarding, challenging, and important profession in the world, the education of our children. One of these teachers that stands out for me was my fourth grade teacher, Ms. Warren. You would think I wouldn't have liked a teacher that gave at least two hours of homework each night, but it was Ms. Warren's connection with each of her students that made her so special. She had a way of making each of her students feel important to her, which in turn made us want to do the work that she demanded. She cared for us and read to us each day. We loved listening to the stories, and while we enjoyed listening time, she was also instilling in us a love of reading and literature. We got to write a lot, and she enjoyed all of our creative stories, and even though we didn't have the technology and the vast array of educational resources, manipulatives, and materials that students enjoy today, we were able to gain a fabulous education and love of learning. Ms. Warren had patience and kindness and classroom control without ever raising her voice. With each teacher at every grade level, my teachers inspired me to not only learn, but also to be someone who could hopefully someday positively impact the lives of others through teaching. I hope at some point this week, you can take a minute to share with your colleagues which teachers in your life had the greatest impact on you and why. I'm hoping to hear about some great teachers from my colleagues this week. While my journey toward teaching as a career began at Marymount Grade School and went through St. Francis University and Hunter College of the City University of New York, it was here in Falls Church where I had the opportunity to implement my heart's desire. I taught for six years before landing here, and I knew right away that Falls Church City Public Schools was different in a very unique and special way. This small system impressed me with their commitment to small classes, teacher mentoring and collaboration, and providing whatever resources teachers needed in order to do their jobs. The teaching of critical thinking, problem solving, and inquiry-based learning was a priority throughout the school system and continues through this day. Foster schools were at the forefront of technology and dynamic learning environments and was dedicated to a challenging and differentiated curriculum that would meet the needs of all students, creating lifelong learners. Staff members valued each other's differences and respected different opinions. And although the school system wasn't perfect, Overall, colleagues made a strong effort to connect with each other, sharing each other's joys, and being supportive during our challenging times. Personally, I will always be grateful to the staff members who were there for me during my brother's death and when I went through my breast cancer ordeal, and on a happier note, celebrated my children's births and most recently, the birth of my first grandchild this summer. My experience is not unique, though. I see these kinds of supports between colleagues all of the time. Everyone here brings their gifts to the classroom. I know we will continue bringing our best to our students. We can also continue the conversation about teachers that have had a positive impact on our lives, as well as embrace the teacher influences at our own schools. And notice what they bring to their classes and to your school culture. As teachers, we continually reflect on our practice and how we can be better teachers, how we can improve our lessons or reach specific students. Today, we'll all gain new knowledge from our professional development classes that will bring fresh new ideas for us. We will use this knowledge combined with our past knowledge and our own talents, as well as the gifts from our past and present teachers and from our current colleagues. You just may be influencing some of our future teachers and leaders. They will one day fondly remember all of you and your positive impact on their learning and their lives. And on a daily basis this year, we can enjoy the presence of our colleagues and the many gifts they bring to the classroom and allow it to beneficially impact us. And if we mess up, we can clean up the pieces, forgive ourselves, forgive others, and just start over and fresh the next day. For those of you new to Falls Church this year, I hope you find our schools to be a special place for teaching and learning. For those of you returning this year, may you enjoy another wonderful year with your students and colleagues. I hope all of us find the inspiration we seek among each other and that we take the time to remember the administrators, 
teachers, and support staff that inspire us the most. I'm so grateful for the leadership of principals Bill Thomas and Mary Ellen Shaw and Superintendent Dr. Warren Pace for interviewing me and hiring me. In 1986, I joined two outstanding fourth grade teachers, Emily Florence and Carla Strickland, who became my fabulous first mentors and teammates at TJ. Other TJ educational leaders who inspire me include principals Greg Alekshu, Trudy Taylor, Bob Palermo, and our newest principal, Paul Swanson. On a daily basis, I am inspired by all of the staff at TJ, my TJ family. Also, by all of the members of my fourth grade team, and to my carpool buddies, Lisa Allen and Heidi Lang. With gratitude to all of my teachers, I wish to thank the many administrators and educators, both from the past and those I currently work with. You have inspired me and guided me along my path as a teacher. I am so grateful that I have had the opportunity to stay in Falls Church and work with the awesome students and my fabulous Falls Church City Public Schools colleagues. I wish all of you a terrific professional week and an inspirational day, every single day of the 2016-2017 school year. Thank you. We are actually going to have you come in a little bit closer so they can get a picture. And while they're organizing, or Mr. Brett organizes our uh, honorees, I was trying to calculate as they were coming up, I think, so don't quote me, like it's 460 years of service on the stage. 460 years of combined service. That's a lot. Thank you, and thank you, Mary, for those words. Thank you. And at this time, I'm going to invite Debbie Hiscott uh, with the Vols Church Education Foundation. How does one follow Mary Kelly? There, there really are no words for the inspiration she's been to me in my 20 years in Falls Church and to my children who've been so fortunate to have her and all the Mary Kellys out in the audience uh, within our school system. Thank you so very much. Uh, again, I'm Debbie Hescott. I'm the Executive Director of the Falls Church Education Foundation, and our sole purpose really is to be here to help you, the amazing team who focuses on our children every day. FCF is awarding our third round of super grants uh, and teacher training grants very soon. We have over $75,000 to award, and you have nine more days to submit your application. So please do so, and don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. The world headquarters of Falls Church Education Foundation are in the central office, and I'm pretty easy to find. I'd also like to remind you about the Run for the Schools and encourage you to register. It's a run or walk, a 5K or a one mile. It's on Sunday, September 18th. And it's always a great way to start the year with over 700 of our community members there to see you and the mascots and to enjoy one another's company on a beautiful morning in the city of Falls Church. Registration forms are in the school offices and outside, or you can always look on our website as well. My prompt here says I'm supposed to hold a shirt up for you, but it's not here, so you'll have to wait. Ah, it's here, never fear. If you didn't get a chance to see this t-shirt for our uh, Falls Church Police Department, you'll get to see one very soon. We have one for each and every staff member, thanks to the Nancy and Steve Sprague Teacher Leadership Fund of the Falls Church Education Foundation. On the way to your professional development sessions, please stop at the table, pick up a shirt and a registration form for our 5K run, and wear these t-shirts in good health. Best wishes to all of you for a fabulous school year. Thank you so much. And as we get ready to close out, we have a couple of logistics 
Um, just remember that the buses will leave for those of you that are not staying uh, if you are returning to the schools. And we also just want to say a couple of uh, last round of thank yous. First of all, the food service for the great breakfast today. Thank you. Thank you to our amazing transportation department who are routing, rerouting with new developments and all that they do and for transporting us today. Thank you to our transportation department, Nancy. Thank you to our maintenance. I can't tell you, we haven't added maintenance staff. Um, I think it's been at least a decade and we have added thousands and thousands of square feet to our school division. We've also, uh, we are seeing the largest enrollment this year in the history of Falls Church for us. It's going to be a four to five percent growth year again. So maintenance staff, thank you for all that you do keeping us going. Our custodial staff, thank you for getting our buildings ready. It's, it is a tough, tough job to get everything ready, especially with the usage that we have in the summer of our buildings. Our buildings don't sit quiet. We had over, I think it was 340 uh, George Mason students engaged in summer programs this summer, and TJ was amazing. It was a buzz every day between daycare and summer. So thank you to our custodians. Thank you to our technology department. It's, a, it's really tough getting the year going and getting everything ready, and especially when you do things like closing down six trailers that were uh, deemed at the high school uh, to be challenging and moving all of that technology. I also want to take this time to say uh, thank you to those six teachers. It's very difficult when you don't know that you're going to be moving, and at the drop of a hat, we call you and say, wow, we need to get your stuff out of that trailer. And some of those people have been in those trailers quite a while. So thank you for your patience. Um, also to central office, you process so many people in the summer for us with our new hires between fingerprinting and doing all that you do. So thank you central office for working so hard on our behalf. And last but not least, our sponsors for today, we want to say thank you very much. And in closing, I hope that each one of you go out and are touched by children this year uh, and the wonderful things uh, that will happen in your classrooms, but also that you're able to stay focused on how you are touching the lives of children. So thank you for the work that you do and for picking the most noble profession in the universe. Have a great year.